feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp tank. When it's in your Hey everybody, welcome to the post-show wrap-up of The Shrimp Tank. You can always catch a replay of all of our shows on shrimptankpodcast.com or download us on iTunes. You'll hear amazing stuff from CEOs in and around the state of Georgia. And if you watch a YouTube channel, you're going to learn from some of the kids. We heard some great ideas the last few weeks from some kids that are becoming entrepreneurs. I'm here today with my co-host, Chris Hanks, who's the executive director and founder of the Kennesaw State, now the Shore Center for Entrepreneurship, and Joey who's a rising star at Kennesaw State. And, of course, we had on our guest today, Chris Dahl, who's the president and CEO of the Global Franchise Group. And we were talking today because if you don't know a lot about Global Franchise Group, you're going to have to listen to the entire podcast. We talked about their great brands, Great American Cookie and Pretzel Maker, and we've got the Marble Slab Creamery, and now we've got Hot Dog on a Stick, which started in California, and now we actually have one here in Atlanta in the town center in Kennesaw if you want to try it. So I was curious as we were doing our show today, Chris, that with all of those brands, with you as a president and CEO of a lot of people, how do you actually manage culture considering that each one of those brands probably carry on their own identity? Sure. So culture is really important to any business. And it starts with a corporate culture at GFG, and our culture is about championing brands and the people who build them. But each of our brands have their own identity, their own DNA, and they are um, really living their culture on a day-to-day basis, not necessarily that of GFG. And so... For instance, Great American Cookies is creating fond memories. And so the culture of GAC, everything we do is about creating fond memories. And so we have multiple cultures in one organization. So um, having spent some time in the franchising world, um, there's all these franchising cliches that I've heard like, uh, you know, hey, we help you work on your business, not in your business and that kind of thing. Um, what, is there a cliche that you hear in the franchising industry that annoys you? Yes. Uh, So something I hear a lot these days is major in the majors and not in the minors, which would imply that you should focus on the big picture items of your business and not so much worry about the small things. My experience is that the small things can come up and bite you just as uh, aggressively as the big things. So if you're not focusing on all things in your business, not just the high level big things, then you're probably making a mistake. Nice. So you obviously have multiple, multiple franchisees who you manage across different brands. So how do you find that balance between franchisee autonomy, but then still controlling and regulating the overall brand? So I think it's important that in a franchise concept that the franchisor and the franchisee work hand in hand. Uh, Any concept where you uh, have a franchisee that's not regularly communicating with the franchisor tends to think of things their own way and want to do that things their own way, and that can create a divide in the relationship. And so by involving your franchisees in decision-making around product, marketing, and all things brand-related is uh, key to, to creating that unity. And Chris, you've seen a lot of franchises that are out there. What do you think, for people that are watching this, since you've basically probably seen it all, the good, the bad, and the ugly, what's the number one character trait that someone watching this, this YouTube needs to have if they want to be an entrepreneur in a franchising business? The number one trait would be to be passionate about profits. If, if you're passionate about making ice cream or you're passionate about cookies, that's great. But at the end of the day, you get in business to make money. So if you're passionate about profits and you can always look to the end game, which is can I make a living at this business and I like making money, um, that's really the one trait that trumps all. Is Subway the greatest franchise of all time? Are they the, are they the, uh, I've always seen that they had the most franchise. Are they the greatest of all time, or is McDonald's the greatest of all time, or is Great American Cookie <laughs> the greatest of all time? You know where I'm going with that. <laughs> um, you know, I think that that's a tricky answer, a tricky <clears throat> question to answer, because the greatest franchise <clears throat> of all time is the franchise that any franchisee is operating in where they have recognized their dream. Right. Um, and so, you know, is is Subway the most successful at franchise development over, of all time, or is or is uh, McDonald's or the like? Yeah, they've done amazing things and they've grown their business uh, tremendously. But at the end of the day, what really determines a franchise is uh, good or bad is has it generated the 
the living that someone bought into. So for people, excuse me, for people watching the, the post show wrap up today, if they wanted to own a franchise, uh, whether it's hot dog on a stick or a great American cookie, if it still exists, how can they get in touch with you to learn more about your business, potentially sign up to become a franchisee? Sure. So it's as simple <clears throat> as going to globalfranchise.com and all of our brands are listed on the site and you can click on them and it'll take you right to the information page. So folks, what did we learn today? You know, <clears throat> I don't know a ton about the franchising business, but I had a boss that once told me, be smart enough to be dumb enough to do everything I tell you to do and you'll be successful. And that is in part some of what we do as a franchise. They've set the rules, they've made the playbook. If you're smart enough to learn how to operate the business, you too can do well. And thanks Chris so much for coming on this Rim Tank and that was your post show wrap up.